Okay, we're going to be creating uh, terrains from borehole data. Um, we're going to be using the Gint Civil Tools, and um, we're going to be connecting to an Excel spreadsheet here that has the borehole data in it. Um, this borehole is coming from Gint. Um, it, it is formatted like the GPJ file. In fact, if you have the GPJ file from Gint, that'd be better um, to use easier. Wouldn't have to export out to this Excel format. But we can. Um, just wanted to take a simple example here of this Excel format which is um, really just has three tabs. It has a project tab, a point tab, and a lithology tab, and the program is actually looking for those, those names down there. So on the project tab, we have some columns with some just project data in it. The point tab records basically the XYZ of each borehole, borehole name, and then the lithology has then the borehole name with the um, top and bottom depths and then the um, information about the material. So once we get the information, those three tabs, um, points, and then lithology, we'll be able to switch over to open roads um, to import that into borehole data and create terrains out of it. So we'll switch over to open roads on the geotechnical workflow um, and we'll hit the database connectivity. We'll choose Microsoft Excel and we'll browse and choose that Excel file that we were just looking at. Once we have that open, all we really need to do on this first tab is tell it what, what the name of the column header was that had our borehole point IDs in it. That's point ID. Uh, once we do that, we can switch over to the borehole tab and it's already looking at that point tab and it it's already found the easting northern elevation column headers there. So we'll just create a new tab here for the lithology. We'll name it lithology. Say OK on that. And then um, we will tell it where the column header names for the different um, depths, top depth, bottom depth. The identifier was the graphic column. And then the last one we need to do is down here, level creation. We'll use the graphic. Uh, for that as well, just to um, help with the symbology out there. We'll say OK on that, and we've got a connection to that database. The next thing we're going to do is just hit the query to um, bring all those in. We'll select all the nine boreholes and hit retrieve. So those are written to the DGN file now. We'll do a fit. We'll see our nine there, and let's change to an ISO view so we can see them. We can see that it has imported our boreholes with a different depth. Let's go ahead and change our display style to a, um, something that we can see better. Uh, how about we'll do um, illustration shadows. So we can see that a little better. We can see all the different levels for boreholes. Um, so now that they've been imported, uh, we can go now to the um, 3D modeling tab. Uh, to actually create a terrain from those different layers. So we'll click on that up at the top. And once we click on the Create Terrain, we have a dialog where the first thing we're going to do in this dialog is we're going to go to the Identifier tab and pick which layer we want to create a terrain from. This first example, I'll just create one along the very top of those asphalt uh, points there. Um, I'm going to toggle on the Use All Boreholes button down here at the bottom. And then... Um, for create bottom or top, I want to do the top, so I'm going to leave that unchecked and just do a data point out here in the drawing, and that asphalt layer is created. <clears throat> and we can look at that, and I just chose to do it across the top as an example there. Um, so what's this bottom layer here is shale. So let's go ahead and create terrain one more time, and we'll use the top of shale. So uh, in our identifier, we're going to pick that shale surface, I'm going to say yes to use all boreholes. I'm going to leave bottom unchecked because I want the top of that layer created and do a data point and then my shale terrain is created.